Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. CES 2025 is less than a week away, where we expect AMD and NVIDIA to announce their next generation GPUs. And of course, there will be a ton of other technology announcements in the same time frame. With that said, there are a couple of very interesting news stories I want to blast through today. The first of which will be by far the quickest, so we'll get to it first, and that's the Arctic 5080 and 5070 Ti being listed by the system integrator i buy power pc do let me know in the comments below but i think these guys are pretty well known in the us um, but regardless of that the 5080 with 16 gigabytes of memory and a 5070 ti also with the same amount of memory were being listed with pre-built systems now it's worth noting that there are actually benchmarks you can see here on screen but the performance data is essentially pointless um, so videocards.com actually grabbed some screenshots, but I also want to give uh, the credit to Momomo US because they were the first ones, I believe, to first spot this. But basically speaking, the performance data is just complete garbage um, because the 1080p performance, well, first of all, who the hell is going to buy an RTX 5080 to play it like 1080p? Let's just be honest. Um, but it's around 5x faster than the 1440p performance, which obviously makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Also, there are tons of glaring obvious issues in terms of the specifications. In fact, it even references an RTX 50, uh, what was it, a 5080 Super. Now, of course, we do expect the Super Cards to eventually be announced by NVIDIA. However, these are almost certainly not going to be the GPUs which appear at launch. So we're expecting the 5090, the 5080, 5070, and 5070 Ti being the first cards. Speaking of the 5090, though, let's poke at that for just a second. Where the hell is it? Well, the most obvious answer is that, well... This is essentially a leak from a bunch of stuff that was uploaded to their website, I buy powers, I mean. So it's very possible that they simply did not put these uh, systems available right now publicly, or perhaps they just haven't been leaked and other people have discovered them. And also these pages have now been taken down. Another very, quite frankly, in my personal opinion, this is more likely is that the 5090 is going to launch later because we've seen lots of rumors concerning this at this point that the 5090 will launch a couple of weeks or a month later than the 5080 i believe wccf tech as well as other um websites are reporting this i've heard from one source that the reason that's being attributed to this is basically the retail sample uh chips for the 5090 which are gb202 of course they basically have fallen behind the mass production schedule so yes, there are the qualification samples which companies like, for example, Asus or MSI or whomever have so that can actually build the GPUs and get ready for mass production. But whether this is true or not, it doesn't really matter. I probably am guessing that the 5090s are going to come later. Uh, another reason potentially is that NVIDIA themselves are purposefully doing this. The reason, maybe they want to uh, put focus on the 5080, 5070 class cards and the 5090s come later. Then again, who knows? We'll have to just wait and see on this one, guys. I'm very curious, however, of course, to see what the schedule is as well as the pricing of these cards. But now let's move on to something with a bit more meat to it. And that's the RDNA 4 RX 9070 XT and 9070 because we have some information concerning, well, a bunch of stuff, not least of which the release date. So just to get everyone caught up, there was a rumor that was swirling around and this was on uh, Chip Hell. A user there, Zhang Zhonghua, uh, stated that the cards, the you know reference models from AMD, will have a TBP of around 260 watts. Custom variants can go up to 330 watts, and the clock frequency is going to boost to around 3.1 gigahertz. Furthermore, in terms of performance, it's going to fall within around 5% of a 4080, so a little bit slower. This is allegedly from game tests. Of course, we'll have to wait and see whether that's true. There were other benchmarks that started to emerge. However, I believe these were Time Spy and these got leaked on uh, Twitter. I believe that 
I was told anyway that the reason that those results were lower is because basically it was to do with drivers and AMD deliberately purposefully nerfing performance. But whether that's true or not, whether the results were just, you know, never true to begin with, it's hard to know. Or maybe Zhang Zong Rao's data is the one that's incorrect. As always, we'll have to wait for official confirmation from AMD. And it becomes even harder because, well, let's assume that his data is correct and it's within 5% of the 4080. That means theoretically, if you were to overclock these GPUs, you can probably make that gap up, you know, around 5%. But even if it is from game tests, what is that? Well, first of all, are those games like more AMD uh, favored, I guess is the best way of describing it? Or are they more NVIDIA favored? Or is it just across like, let's say 12, 15, 20 games? If so, what resolution? Is it ray tracing involved? What about upscaling? And so on and so on. So we'll have to wait and see. But regardless, I am pretty positive of the RDNA 4 based GPUs. Uh, of course, price depending. But there are some new rumors. So first of all, Benchlife covered the older leaks, but they basically added a ton of extra info. First of all, the release date is allegedly going to be before the Lunar New Year. So this puts it before the end of January. Or to put things in another way, within a month, if you want to go the AMD cards, you'll be able to buy them, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, obviously, AMD themselves are planning to uh, announce things like the Strix Point Halo, aka Sarlacc APUs. We're expecting the high-end uh, X3D processors, like the 9950X3D as well, to be announced. So it's going to be a pretty good time for AMD, to be honest. Uh, regardless, there is also a few other things. So as many of you know, AMD uh, went a very different route to NVIDIA when it comes to actually providing juice to their current cards. So that's RTX 40 in the RX uh, 7000 series. Basically, NVIDIA, of course, went the new power connector route and AMD went the uh, eight pin power connectors. Uh, sorry, stuck with the eight pin power connectors. Now, Benchlife are saying that at least some models of the 9070 XT, for example, will still have the eight pin power connectors, albeit up to three of them. Um, and this is going to be enough to, of course, power the 330 watts. Now, that's not to say, however, that we won't see the new power connectors. But basically, AMD are not requiring the use of 12VHWPR or 12V-2X6. As an aside, please, for the love of God, that's just not <laughs> those names. Like USB-C, it's so simple. And then you've got 12V-2X6. I know some people just call it 16-pin power connectors, but even so, like, come on, guys, the naming schemes... Regardless of which, um, I personally don't mind the new connectors. Obviously, there were a lot of early reports with the RTX 40 and you know, the connectors kind of melting. But uh, I think much of this has gotten resolved, at least to my knowledge now, uh, especially with the new uh, updates. But regardless of all of that, if you are uncomfortable with these new connectors, then it seems that AMD may be providing you, well, I guess kind of a lifeline. With that said... At around 330 watts, obviously these connectors are being absolutely no way strained anyway, as the 12VH ones can go up to like 600 watts. So yeah, you're basically hitting around half of that, depending on whether we're talking 260, slightly less or slightly more if you're talking the 330 version. So in theory anyway, it's not even slightly going to be straining the GPUs. With that said, let me know your thoughts on the pricing for these cards, because I think... The pricing for me is going to be perhaps even more intriguing than the NVIDIA uh, prices. And the reason is just because, in theory anyway, you're going to be getting raster performance, which is roughly speaking similar to what AMD are already putting out with their RDNA 3 class cards. However, obviously there's changes in the VRAM configuration. The ray tracing performance is considerably faster. And these are also the cards which can compete against NVIDIA's cards. So it's going to be very interesting to see what actually AMD chooses to do with their pricing strategies um, for these GPUs, to be very honest with you. With that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. And also, welcome to the new year. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.